now with a Fox News alert. Israel is ramping up their ground operations in the Gaza Strip as Israel officially declares it is in the second stage of its war against Hamas. IDF sending in a column of tanks and armored vehicles into Gaza as part of the expanding offensive on Hamas targets. Also tonight, Israeli, atta Israel attacking Hezbollah terrorist targets in Lebanon in response to rocket launches into Israel. The objectives of this war require a ground operation. Achievements demand risks, and as we know, every victory comes at a price. Trey Yingst is live on the ground in southern Israel tonight. Trey, to you. Good evening. We understand the Israelis are operating again at this hour inside the Gaza Strip. After yesterday, it was announced that an expanded raid into Gaza would take place. It appears this is the early working of a ground operation. We have not yet been able to confirm this is the full assault on Gaza, but the Israelis have been hammering the northern part of the Strip with artillery units, naval shelling, and airstrikes. We watched throughout the evening as that was taking place. I want you to take a look. You can see behind me the Israeli Air Force continues to hammer the northern part of the Gaza Strip with airstrikes and tank fire. They are working around the clock to destroy targets while they have ground troops inside. The amount of fighting along the border is the heaviest that we have seen since this war erupted on October 7th. You can hear the explosions there. 22 days into this conflict, the factions inside Gaza have maintained their abilities to fire rockets toward major population centers. Multiple times today, sirens were sounding in the central part of this country, sending hundreds of thousands of people to bomb shelters. Also, as the war cabinet spoke this evening, they were firing rockets. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressing the nation and the world tonight saying, quote, it's our second war of independence. We will win. The Israeli prime minister trying to show the world this will be a long fight, not weeks, but months. Guys, back to you. Trey, before we let you go, thank you so much for your reporting there on the ground as well. There is this sense that this is the ground invasion that has begun, perhaps not the full scale. So is there still a significant amount of assets there on the ground that Israel could deploy? Could this ramp up to further degree? Absolutely. We are only looking at what's called the Givati Brigade that's participating in this expanded raid into the northern part of Gaza. There are thousands of Israeli soldiers all up and down the Gaza border. They have tanks, APCs, armored bulldozers, and they are preparing and waiting for those orders for a larger operation to begin. We should also note Yoav Gallant, the country's defense minister, said tonight that just a fraction of the Israeli Air Force is involved in the airstrikes against Gaza and the responses against Hezbollah along the border with Lebanon. So he's also looking to signal here to Israel's enemies around the world, including Iran and its proxies across the Middle East, that the Israelis maintain a high level of firepower. And we also know that the Americans have indicated support to Israel should this expand to a broader regional conflict. And so we're looking at a situation here where Israel is preserving its ability to strike other targets should this expand. And they also know that this is just the early days of a war that will likely take months to complete. Guys? Trey, it's Tommy. Uh, I wanted to ask you, obviously, there's a lot of concern about the civilians on the ground there. We have a statement from an IDF spokesperson warning Gaza residents to relocate. I want to take a listen to the clip, and then I have a couple questions for you on the other side. Your window to act is closing. Move south for your own safety. Move south. This is not a mere precaution. Trey, what is the scope, if you know it, of the number of civilians that have been able to relocate, if they're able to? Any sense of what it's like on the ground for civilians and their ability to not only hear these warnings, but also get themselves out in time? It's a great question. Thousands of civilians have evacuated south after warnings that started last week from the Israeli military telling people to get out of northern Gaza. They dropped leaflets from planes and also sent out text messages to residents who live in the northern part of the Strip, telling them to go south.
But each and every day, the military has reiterated these calls, telling people they need to get out of the way as this operation continues. The video there, it's interesting it was released by the Israelis today because reports indicate there is no cell service and no internet service in much of Gaza now. Uh, the services have been cut, and so the only way to get information out of the Strip is through people who have a SIM card and a cell phone that can connect to an Israeli tower or an Egyptian cell tower. We've been talking with a few civilians inside Gaza who do have foreign cell phones, and they describe the situation as loud, many strikes in the distance, but the Israelis are focusing their efforts on the northern part of the Strip. The people we've been talking with are around Khan Yunus and also Rafa, the southern cities and the central city in Gaza. Trey, Charlie Hurt here. Uh, what can you tell us about the ongoing negotiations, hostage negotiations involving the Qataris? So the negotiations are ongoing, from what we understand. Just yesterday, the Israelis came out with a new number, 230 people being held inside Gaza. And it's an incredibly difficult and delicate process. We know that already four people have been released, two American citizens and two elderly Israeli women from the kibbutz, the small community of Neroz. But other than those four people, everyone else still being held inside Gaza. So the Qataris are working around the clock trying to convince Hamas and Islamic Jihad, those who are holding these hostages, to cut some sort of deal. And there are rumors and, and reports that we have not been able to independently confirm that discussions are underway to have some sort of prisoner swap, release some Palestinians that are being held in Israeli jails in exchange for some of the hostages. Now, a deal that large would have a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that could go wrong. And according to the reports on the ground and the statements we've received from officials inside Gaza, that's what's, hit, that's what's taking place. And so we'll have to wait and see in the coming hours and days if they're able to get any sort of swap together. Trey, this is Jason Chaffetz. First of all, thanks for the incredible reporting that you're doing and uh, in the most dangerous situation. So thank you for that. But uh, help me understand what's going on with Hezbollah up north. How would you characterize what's going on right now in real time? So along the Israel-Lebanon border, there has not been a lot of activity following this ground operation into northern Gaza, an indication that Hezbollah may be not getting directly involved in this fight, as many had feared. They are still firing some rockets, mortars, and anti-tank guided missiles into northern Israel, but the fire is minimal for now. Jason. Trey, thank you so much. Um, I guess as a final question, you've done a tremendous job uh, Playing witness to, to history, and we want to thank you very much. Um, I'll actually, we're saying to wrap up, but thank you so much for, for bearing witness to the, to the absolute worst of humanity and, and wrapping things up with a filter for us and also uh, the great geopolitical scope that you give us with every interview. So thank you very much, Trey. We appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.